Obama. Sorry, I have to start with Joe Biden now saying the quiet part out loud. This has been sort of whispered about, mumbled about, muttered about, but with with military leaders coming out and basically describing Donald Trump's conduct over the last 10 days as being um, against what we stand for as a country, undemocratic, potentially unconstitutional. Joe Biden's saying out loud what people have worried about for months, that Donald Trump might not accept the results of the 2020 election. Wow. Well, you know, it's important to say, Nicole, it's not up to Donald Trump to accept the results. The results are the results. Um, he can't have a tantrum and knock it out of the White House if he loses. But if he wins, he can stay. I think what's happening with Biden uh, is that he has decided he can't really fight this battle of propaganda over the results in advance with one hand tied behind his back. The president is out there all the time uh, spreading conspiracy theories about the outcome, about voting and mail-in ballots. And it's really an insurance policy for the president. If he wins, he can say he won despite the best efforts of Antifa and protesters to the elections. And if he loses, he can say, well, I didn't really lose. It's a way of actually protecting himself and having a political insurance policy. I think that Biden um, is trying to start that conversation from his side now. Well, Eugene, there's a history of Donald Trump seeking to invalidate the results of a presidential election in which he won. He appointed some guy from Kansas named Chris something to invalidate the popular vote in 2016 when Donald Trump won an electoral victory. I know it's sometimes hard to tell where the political calculus ends and the, the the craziness uh, and paranoia begins, but but I, I I do agree with Nick that it was um, I think it was actually smart of, of Joe Biden um, to come out with it and to say what people have asked me about uh, a lot and I've written about and I've said the same thing that Joe Biden said, which is that the result is going to be the result. It's going to be recognized um, by by the institutions of this country. And if necessary, uh, the president will be carried bodily out of the White House on January 20th um, of next year. Um, but, um, you know, maybe he's just um, protecting his own ego so he can say, well, I didn't really lose. Maybe he's trying to further inflame his base. Um, but uh, I, I think Biden was right to, to, to get out front of it and, and start talking about it in, in the open rather than just leave that field of craziness just to Trump. You know, Eli, it, it does suggest some sort of evolution from 2016, where the Republicans, all 16 of them, failed to adapt to the asymmetry, to the melding of conspiracy theories and trutherism with um, ideas. You know, you can't say Trump didn't have ideas. He was for the wall. It was for some other rather xenophobic stuff. Making America great was the banner. Joe Biden seems to have adapted to what we know Donald Trump will do, which is try to win at all costs. He finds himself in this moment really at a step with a vast majority of Americans on the conversation about race and totally absent from the anxieties many Americans have about coronavirus. And he's, he's got these sort of pillars, I think, that he probably thought were under him on the culture side, NASCAR fans, country music singers. I mean, he's, he's the Pentagon, uh, military, members of the military and their families and, and former military slipping out of his grasp. How do you see this moment and Trump's hold on it? Well, I think you described it well, Nicole. I think Joe Biden doesn't have to do a whole lot to align himself in the mainstream uh, and to draw these contrasts because Trump is doing the work for him in aligning himself so far outside of what we're seeing in this country uh, with these very diverse uh, protests in the streets in so many different cities and suburbs and small towns of people who are not just black but white people, people of all colors coming together and saying that enough is enough. It's time we start trying harder to achieve our country and to live up to the foundational ideals. The president, I've talked to a lot of his campaign officials, and they initially saw these protests and said, OK, here it is. Here's our opportunity to turn things around. And we're going to have to just scare white voters. Well, if you look at the polling, 74 percent of Americans support these protests. The NFL can read a poll. NASCAR can read a poll. The president, though, 
continues to press the same button he has always pushed. It's really the only button for him. That's the white identity politics button. And we saw it again yesterday before the brief. I mean, it was so intentional when the briefing is delayed. Then the press secretary comes out right after Trump has sent the three tweets out saying he will never allow the renaming of these military installations that are named currently for Confederate generals. The press secretary hands the tweet out on paper to the reporters in the room, then reads it. I mean, this is a culture war that they want, that they are stoking. Uh, the explanation is completely illogical that all the soldiers who embarked from these bases would somehow be dishonored by renaming them uh, as if they fought for the names of these bases and the right to name these bases after people who didn't believe uh, in inalienable rights being attained by all people. I think what most people fought for are democratic ideals, and yet the White House is just trying so hard uh, to push this button, and it just feels very out of step with what you're seeing and what the polling is saying uh, at this moment. And so Joe Biden started to come out uh, and, and to do events, but, but Trump has done a lot of this work for him over the last few months. And Eugene, I just add one more poll number. Um, it's 76 percent of Americans and 71 percent of white Americans who call racism and discrimination a big problem. So Donald Trump really just starts with 20. I'm not good at math, but about 30 percent of the electorate, 29 percent of the electorate even showing up for a conversation. And, and he's going to start that conversation when he returns to the campaign trail with a rally in Tulsa um, on uh, Juneteenth. Quite a quite a statement, um, if that's what they intended to make. Yeah. yeah, and maybe they maybe they're making that statement, picking an African American holiday, picking Tulsa, the site of of the, this, this brutal, incomprehensibly um, brutal uh, uh, race riot against African Americans in Tulsa. Uh, 99 years ago. Um, so maybe that was somehow intentional. Maybe it was just out of ignorance. Uh, they do know how to pick them, I'll tell you. Uh, and, uh, and once again, it puts Donald Trump squarely on the side of white supremacy at, at, a, at a moment when finally the whole history and ideology of white supremacy that's been a subtext, uh, at times a main text in, in American uh, society since the beginning uh, is is being questioned and examined in a way that it hasn't before. I mean, I've I've, I've had heard people who have have an interest in um, the race history of this country, African American history, which is actually just American history, um, a kind of interest that they haven't had before. I think this is. Potentially, and you know, one doesn't count chickens before they hatch. But this is potentially really a transformational moment, and the president seems bewildered by it. He's completely on the wrong side of it, and uh, and and so that you know that thirty percent is more likely uh, to dwindle than to grow. It seems to me. Mm -hmm. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.